hi, this is Vanessa Conlin, uh, Master of Wine and Head of Wine for Wine Access. And I'm here with uh, NBA superstar Dwayne Wade. Needs certainly no introduction in that regard, but we're, we're really here to talk about wine today uh, and kind of what, uh, what inspired you to, to be a vintner. So um, I'm curious because I did not grow up in a wine family. It's something that I came yeah. much later in life. So yeah. what was your first experience with wine? Uh, my first experience, uh, first of all, first of all, thank you for um, wanting to have this conversation with me. Uh, I appreciate it. I got a chance to hear a lot about you and um, your reputation is pretty solid. Um, <laughs> well, uh, right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm, a, I'm a young I say young from the standpoint of I'm 38 years old. Um, but I didn't start drinking wine until roughly 27, 28 years old. So I'm, I'm, t I'm a decade into this wine process. So I'm a baby still when it comes to, you know, understanding the industry um, and, and, and just understanding what wine in general. So uh, my first experience of wine came from a teammate of mine, uh, Alonzo Morning. Uh, you know, it's just the, the veteran guys when you play in the NBA are so important to your your growth and your understanding of the world and, you know, and how to be. And Alonzo introduced my first glass was a bottle of flowers wine. Yeah. I thought it was the worst thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> uh, and it was because, you know, I come from drinking lemonade <laughs> and everything. Like, my, my drink yeah. was. Uh, orange juice and cranberry juice, like, you know, it was all about the sweets. And Alonzo was trying to introduce me to something, which I found out now that's incredible. But I wasn't really, really ready for it at the time. But I kept trying, I kept trying, and I kept trying. And then I found some Riesling wine that was very sweet. I can't remember the name of it, but I remember saying, okay, I could drink this because it reminds me of what, you know, <laughs> what I drink normally. So... <laughs> That's, that was the beginning. I just spoke actually to your your buddy at Udonis Haslam uh, last week about wine, and he was talking about how um, you and, and Jimmy Butler, you guys kind of all share this this love for wine. It sounds like they really appreciate and, and respect <laughs> Um, you know, what you, what you have to sort of teach them or guide them. So do you kind of see yourself in the MBA as someone who's um, an educator or someone who's bringing other people into your wine journey? You know what? I, I think I, I guess I am. Um, the, the, the guys before us, the veterans before, you know, us and I, and I say, I'm not in the NBA no more. So I, I got to stop saying us. <laughs> but um, you know, the guys be before, you know, when I played the game, um, they drunk wine, but it wasn't, it wasn't cool like it is now. Right. So, yeah. you know, I, our NBA is all about trend. The world is all about trend. And right now wine is trending, you know, up. So, yeah. you know, my, guys like myself and LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony and Chris Paul, who are friends of mine, you know, we share a passion of wine and the younger guys coming in the NBA, uh, hearing about us sharing this passion of wine, hearing about us talking about it, um, et cetera. They start at a younger age than even we did at drinking wine. So uh, I definitely have a lot of the younger guys reach out to me about, you know, certain wines and, you know, uh, I have people, period, now that they know I have my own wines that will reach out to me, not just about my wines, but, hey, I'm in, I'm, 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 I love Pinot Noir, uh, what, what's the best ones? Or, hey, I'm in Oregon, Oregon, and what do you think is, the, you know, just different questions I get yeah. all the time. And a lot of it, too, for me is some I know and some I don't know. And the, the resources that I have by, you know, my journey through the, this wine business for the last, uh, what, six years, um, has allowed me to say, hold on, I'll get right back to you. And then I'm able to reach out to a few people to kind of help guide me in a direction to help yeah. guide others in. So it's cool to be a part of the conversation. Um, it's cool to be able to introduce someone to wine. It's cool to be able to see someone take that, that early passion and turn it into yeah. something like Jimmy Butler has turned into like an obsession now. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Well, so speaking of your wine, so I have actually three different wines here. So I have the, yeah. the three by Wade, the, uh, this is a 2019, um, the white wine. So kind of leads me to the question, you know, you talked about 
you know, getting interested in wine, but, but being interested in wine and actually becoming a vintner are two really different things. So what made you actually decide to, to get into the wine business? You know what? I, I don't know if I have a, a good answer for that. <laughs> uh, you know, it was something that was presented to me uh, from the standpoint, I guess, how someone seen me or seen the brand that I was trying to build. And they felt that I, I would, I guess, from a brand standpoint, they felt that, you know what, I think wine is a good industry for you to, uh, to enter. So I took that conversation and took it to my team and said, hey, you know, what, what, what do you guys think it would look like if we entered the wine business um, and try to learn about it? And maybe towards the end of my career, uh, we can have something, you know, we, I can be in the wine industry. And it was really yeah. a simple conversation that turned into being able to say, OK, let's reach out to the connects that we've made by going to Napa, uh, by, you know, drinking wine. And we was able to do that. And my first the first meeting that I set up was with uh, Jamie Watson, who is now my partner in D. Wade Sellers. But yeah. at the time uh, was, you know, had just got into the Palmeyer family. He married to uh, Cleo Palmeyer. And uh, he, he came down to L.A. and we had just conversations about the passion behind wine. And, and I told him, I said, hey, I don't know a lot about it, uh, but I'm very interested in, to, in doing it. And, you know, so from there, it was like, hey, why don't you come out to Napa, meet Jason Palmeyer and the family, and let's just take the conversation from there. And I did that. I went up in 2014 uh, around harvest time, got a chance to experience harvest time. Um, and got a chance to like kind of walk through and just be amazed by the process of wine. Yeah. Uh, and just sitting down with Jason Palmer and talking to them about, hey, what it will look like if we decided to, to start this off and just do a passion project together. You know, not a wine business, but a passion project. And it started with my, uh, the Wade Cab 2012. That was the first wine that we decided to do as, as a passion project. Um, and now it's grown into hopefully, you know, hopefully a respectable, s small, young brand. Absolutely. And I have, um, so I also have um, your red blend. So uh, Zinfandel Syrah, Malbec, Petite Syrah. Um, yeah. So I'm curious, with, with this wine or with any of the wines, um, did, you, did you taste someone else's wine that, like, inspired you to make wines like these? Or was it all just sort of a collaboration, um, you know, that's, that started purely with you? Well, First, I have to give the biggest love and the biggest shout out to my winemaker, John Keys. John Keys out of Napa Valley is one of the best winemakers uh, there is. And, you know, for me, as a young, as a, having a young palate, as a young wine drinker, I had to lean on and I still lean on the experts. And I don't get in the way of someone else's expertise. But what we were able to do is collab on my palate and what I wanted to see. And, and, what I wanted to see because my name was going to go on this wine. So mm -hmm. even going back to the first wine, the 2012 cab, the 2012 cab, uh, you know, what we felt when we, when we sat down and thought about it, he was like, Hey, I want, let's have this wine represents who you are and you as a player and so forth and so on. So we felt that that right there represented me as a basketball player. And as a man, it was like this combination of this powerful, but finesse, um, you know, when it came to drinking the wine. So we always try to make a story out of each wine. And the story that came up with the red blend was I got into this wine industry not to, to, to become wealthy. I got into this wine industry as a passion, but also got into it as well because I wanted to be able to introduce uh, to, the, to my community, African-American community, introduce them to wine. This is not something mm -hmm. that we grow up... Uh, really been educated about or really known about. So starting off the 2012 cab, that was a $95 bottle and it deserves to be that. But we wanted, I, I talked to the team about making something that was something that we can sell to the masses that was more affordable um, and in the reach of, of most people. And the 20, uh, what was it? 2016 uh, three by weight or something like that was maybe the first year. Uh, I'm, I got so many days. That was the $35 uh, red wine and red blend, something that we felt was, was easier to drink, something that we felt was, uh, was lighter but still gave you the, that luxurious, amazing taste um, that something a, a little higher price would give you. And that's the one that you're holding in your hand, the 3 by Wade. Um, so the 3 by Wade brand, if you've seen, all of the 3 by Wade uh, are, are priced at a reasonable price. The red 
blend is $35. Yeah. Um, the Chenin Blanc is $20, the first one you held up. And the Rosé 3 by weight is $15. So everything we wanted to do with the 3 by weight label was to make sure that it was, it was something that was reachable and affordable uh, for mm -hmm. the masses and, and especially for my community. Yeah. You mentioned the, the 2012 cab. So I don't have that, but I, I do have the 2013, which okay. I'm very excited about because it's actually one of my, uh, one of my favorite vintages. Um, so you mentioned something that I actually wanted to ask you about anyway, which is sort of like, do you think that, um, that people need to know something about wine in order to enjoy it? All you need to know is that you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, when I talk to my team, I talk to them about coming from a space of, of not coming from a space where, you know, I'm, I'm a, a Psalm. I'm, I'm not a Psalm. I didn't go to school for this, but the knowledge that I'm gaining and I'm learning is through my experiences of drinking wine, of asking mm -hmm. the right questions, of being in the right um, rooms. Um, so, you know, what I like to tell a lot of people when it comes to wine, the only thing you need to do is just enjoy, you know, a mm -hmm. glass of wine or enjoy things around it. For me, mm -hmm. what, what, I, what made me fall in love with wine before I fell in love with the taste was the conversations that you can have around a glass of wine, yeah. right? Yeah. So enjoy the things around it and then you fall in love and then you learn more um, about, hey, Dwayne Wade has a Shannon Block. It's, uh, it's a medium body. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it has melon fruits, like all these things. You eventually yeah. learn that, but yeah. that's, not, that's not the thing that you need to get into wine and enjoy wine. Now, I love that you said that because, I, I mean, that's exactly, that is exactly the point of wine, right? It's like inspired conversation, and it's not about always knowing everything. I mean, I, I've devoted my life to studying wine. I don't know everything. You know, I learn something every day new about wine and I think just having that that curiosity is all that really matters you know yes, um, definitely. To, to, to enjoy it but you know if, if you have let's say one of your one of your fans um, um, who maybe doesn't know anything you know about wine um, is curious like what would be the advice that you would give uh, to that person um I tell them to try my wines <laughs> the I would give is, hey, listen, this, I, I know this brand called uh, D Wade Cellars that has some amazing wines that you should try. But outside of that, um, you know, I think for someone who is just getting into wines, I think the first initial thing that I always say, and it, it will only be because of my experience, is try something that's a little lighter, right? Yeah. So if I was if I was going through my wine label and I said somebody this is their first time drinking wine I think the first wine that I would tell them to try would be my Chenin Blanc right would yeah. be my white wine because for me it's refreshing uh you know like I said it's, it has a medium body it's not something that's that's, that's heavy and too powerful like my Cabernet so uh I would definitely kind of kind of start them there first and allow them to kind of say okay this was too light I want more or oh that's just enough or something like that you know right no that totally makes yeah. sense um, so, I mean, I know you're, you're not playing anymore, but like back, when, you know, after, let's say after game, did you, would you celebrate with your own wines or would you open something else or both? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely, listen, I love my wines. I drink my wines a lot, but the only way you learn more about this industry is to be able to drink other wines. And totally. yeah. I, I, I have, an, I mean, I've been blessed to be in a position where I'm able to travel the world. And when I travel the world, everywhere I go, I'm always about, you know, tasting wine. So one of my favorite places in the world to go is Italy. One of my favorite wines to uh, to try. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to ask me this question, but one of my favorite wines uh, yeah. regions is France. Mm -hmm. I love and I don't know where it came from. And I know it's an expensive habit that I'm sorry that I got into right, right away. <laughs> but I love I love French wines. So, yeah. Uh, for me, you know, it's just like, you know, my palate and, and my love for things have just grown from really my travels of the world and the people that I'm sitting down drinking with. They they introduce me to things. Um, and I need that, you know, it, to be able to bring back to my brand, to the Wade Sutler brand and be able to say, hey, I think I'm ready to try this. And I think we're ready to have this in our brand. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll send you a bottle of, uh, of, of, of wine from France that we can enjoy. Is there any region in particular, Bordeaux or Burgundy, or you just kind of like, like, the, like everything from, from France? Well, I, I love, I love, I mean, how can you go wrong with Bordeaux or Burgundy? Yeah. I think 
like, you know, obviously when you think about the wine that changed my life and that messed me up forever is Latash, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm forever scarred because of <laughs> that wine. And that, yeah. <laughs> I taste that very early with a good friend of mine, uh, Adam uh, uh, Haplin in, um, in Canada and him and his father on my birthday. And, and I looked at both of them and I said, y'all just messed my life up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, like I said, I think for me is, I think for me is, is maybe when it comes to, uh, to Bordeaux, it may be uh, something that's more like in France, maybe Bordeaux is more famous, right? From the standpoint of like the, the name and the, or the aura of it. But I love Burgundy wines as well. Well, I mean, yeah, you can't really, uh, there's nothing quite like Latash. So it, uh, it will, it will, <laughs> it ruins you and haunts you and, but in like the most beautiful way for the rest of your life. <laughs> you, you know what I love about it though? And, and I'm a person and, and I know a lot of people do this, a lot of Psalms and, you know, it's when you pour that, when you open that bottle and when you pour that first glass, I'd love to be able to just, to be able to just sniff, um, totally. French yeah. wine. I mean, the, the aroma is the, the, it's incredible, you know, it's incredible. And, and that's what I fell in love with before even the taste was just the, the, the aroma just that comes with putting that, that wine in your glass. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of my favorite. I'm doing it right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the wine thing to do, right? It's like twirl it, smell it. Yeah. And then people be yeah. like, oh, you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, I think you summed it up perfectly because I think especially, you know, when talking about maybe someone who doesn't know anything, they're like, oh, are you just being fancy? Or like, why would you do that? But no, it's like, you just open up this whole world, you know, this whole like layer of enjoyment of the wine that, that you don't get if you just kind of dive right in. So it's, it's yeah, one of my favorite yeah. parts too. Yeah. Yeah. So long answer short, uh, I mean, I'm not against wines anywhere. Obviously my wines come from, you know, Napa Valley, California, yeah. but to be able to travel the world and be able to taste wines and understand, uh, you know, like even going to France or Italy and Spain, I mean, these are some of the biggest, you know, wine, in, this is some of the biggest wineries in the world and mm -hmm. to be able to travel the world and be able to taste those and experience them uh i mean it's opened me up to um you know something that i never thought you know that i would you know enjoy but you know going to these places like one the biggest wine producers in the world so it's been great yeah so um i have sort of one one last question for you i don't want to take too too much of your time but okay so i know you know a lot of celebrities uh, in many fields, but is there one celebrity, dead or alive, that you would just love to sit down and share a glass of your wine with? Can I pick two? Can I do dead and alive? <laughs> Let's do it. So, <laughs> I will go with, um, so the person who is no longer with us that I would love to sit down with, with uh, my wine would be Martin Luther King. And I've, I've said this probably since the first time I was asked that question, Growing up in the, in the city of Chicago, growing up trying to learn about our history, Martin Luther King was somebody that I just uh, respected so much, you know, and, and and didn't know at the time once I got a chance to have a voice that I would use it, not in the way that he used it, but in a way to stand up for my for my people. And I mean, that's so relevant now today yeah. uh, to be able to sit down with a guy like Martin Luther King. So, uh, but alive, I'm going to go in a total different way. And it's just because... <laughs> I like this individual so much from his talents is uh, and, and what he stands for is Denzel Washington. Okay. I would love to sit down with Denzel Washington and I would love to have my wine, my, my, let's say I will sit down with him with a with my bottle of Chenin Blanc, my white wine, and I will eat some Malone's line of like scallops or uh, some, mm -hmm. kind, you know, some like, like, like some snapper, or uh, you know, um, like, I'm just, like, you got me thinking now. I'm like, oh, man. I, you know, and just to sit down, you know, with someone um, that I respect like that and to just, you know, have something that that, I, that I'm that i proud of. I'm proud of my Chenin Blanc. I'm proud yeah. of, you know, the way it pairs with food. Like, even, like, you know, even talking to my chef, uh, when I first got the Chenin Blanc, I, you know, sitting down with my chef, I said, chef, what goes well with this? And first thing he said was pork tenderloin. And I was, and, and I would never thought that because you would think that goes with red wine, right? But it was amazing. 
uh, you know, with it. So, you know, I, I think I would love to sit down with Denzel and just have that vibe and just talk about whatever. Well, this, I have to say, even just since we've been sitting here, this is the, the 13 sure. vintage um, of your Cabernet Napa Valley. It's opened up so much, um, which is I mean, the sign of a really well-made wine that it, it keeps getting keeps getting better. So I'm really excited to, to have tasted these wines with you. I, I'm so excited to, you know, share them with, with our members and, and to have this conversation. I think, you know, you said this early on, but um, I mean, wine was meant to bring people together and share conversation. So this has really been, yep. this has been a pleasure. And you have to tell me uh, next time I'm sitting here in Napa Valley. So next time you're, uh, you're up in Napa, we'll, uh, we'll have to open some bottles. Listen, I would love to. I'm sure you can educate me in ways uh, in drinking wine that, you know, that can make me smarter. Um, but <laughs> every time, you know, I just got to give credit to uh, my, you know, the Paul Meyer family for allowing for allowing me, you know, as a young uh, guy to that's just passionate about wine, to be associated with their brand. I mean, they've worked so hard as a family to uh, establish, you know, what they built and to be in a position where we were able to do this partnership together. And they allow me to have a winemaker like John Keyes and um, and partners like Jamie Watson and, and Matt Norman and, you know, and the team that we're building uh, is so great. So I would love to come to Napa and sit down and drink not only my wines, but all kind of wines. Uh, we'll drink Bordeaux. You. Maybe we'll drink Latash if you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. I got it. I'm retired, but I got one more year where I can still buy Latash. <laughs> Hey, well, this is this has been great. Um, I mean, I think we I think we talked about a lot of a lot of great stuff. But is there anything about you know about your wines or your experience with wine that I didn't ask you that that you'd like to talk about? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess the, my my parting words would be I, you know I just don't want people to get um, you know turned away by the the language around wine because yeah. it, it's so much to learn. It's so much to know. It's so many hard words to say. Right? I, I don't want I don't want people, especially, like I said, once again, I want the people in my community, African American community, to get turned away by, by, by what wine seems to represent. You know, understand yeah. that yeah. Uh, it's, it's something for all of us. Um, mm -hmm. And it's an unbelievable time and it's an unbelievable, you know, kind of family to be a part of. Um, so I want more uh, people to experience it and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's, uh, it's my passion in life, so. I'd love to see that too. So, well, thank you so much. And again, I hope, I hope to see you in Napa and um, uh, I'll, I'll send you a bottle of Bordeaux and then we can, we can compare notes. <laughs> All right, Beth, thank you. Vanessa. All right, Dwayne. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great right. rest of your day. Okay. <laughs> Bye.